Now, let's go back to uh, the situation at Arsenal. I'm delighted to say Robbie Lyle of AFTV is with us. Robbie, good morning to you. Good morning, guys. How are you getting on? Yeah, not too bad. Um, you know, a bit disappointed that we didn't get three points yesterday, um, especially when you see some of the results around us um, over the weekend. But um, I suppose it was a point away from home. We've been so poor away from home this season that uh, it's something. But, I mean, it's Norwich. You're still expecting Arsenal to win the game. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about um, what the level of expectation is around Freddie Lundberg and how quickly he might be able to change things, if at all. Is Freddie somebody who has the experience and the know-how at this level of football just yet? Or is it really a, an article of faith for the Arsenal fans and for the Arsenal board at the moment that he is the right man to take, us, to take you guys through to the rest of the season? Yeah, I think it's uh, um, really hard to judge whether he's going to be the guy for the job. I mean, it's only one game. Um, it wasn't a loss, but it wasn't a win either. Um, there were some good signs in the game. I mean, I was there yesterday, and uh, you know, I, I think the start of the game, it was really we were really infused to see some attacking football, uh, something that we've lacked recently. You know, we were creating numerous chances. And, um, you know, we looked good for about 20, 25 minutes in that game. Um, but then the same old problems with Arsenal, defensive problems, uh, gave away a really cheap first goal, got back into the game with a penalty and then gave away another. Um, poor, poor defending again for the second goal. And then, we, you know, we got back into it with a Bamiang. The guy's been saving us all season. Um, and in the second half, I, you know, I just didn't think, you know, there was moments, but also, you know, those defensive frailties were still there to see. So when I sort of looked on that game yesterday, I'm like, attacking-wise, better we create, because we had a lot of games under Unai Emery where we was hardly creating anything. And that was the other thing that got people really frustrated. But at least we created stuff yesterday. But I think it's too early to judge, um, Freddie. There was a few things he'd done in that game yesterday I was a bit baffled by. I mean... Bringing on Saka um, when you've got Nicolas Pepe and you, you know you'll see, uh, Martinelli who's been playing really well this season. Bringing him on ahead of those guys and he had no effect on the game when he came on. That was really baffling. Starting Mustafi was that the right thing? So I, I, I'd say it was a bit of a mixed debut for for Freddie. But the fans, the fans were right behind him. He's a, he's a club legend. But personally, I hope it's just a temporary you know, appointment and that we get a big manager in for this job. How high are the frustration levels amongst Arsenal fans on the ground there, Robbie, when it comes to what the Arsenal board have done over the past couple of seasons? Of course, we've kind of seen more enlightened stories now about the appointment of Unai Emery, about Mikel Arteta getting overlooked and the potential legacy that that may have. Like, Mikel Arteta is Arsenal's number one contender now. There's no guarantees that he will now accept the role to go back to Arsenal at this point. There has to be some level of frustration in terms of how Arsenal have actually run the club over the past two seasons and the succession plan post Wenger. Yeah, listen, there's high levels of frustration at the board now. I think, um, you know, to be, fair, to be fair, when Unai Emery first came in, I think a lot of fans were like, OK, you know what I mean? If you look at his CV, it seems like a decent appointment. And he got off to a fairly good start, you know what I mean? At the start of last season, he was on a great run. So I think it's when it... I think where people have been very frustrated with the board is that you could see it was going wrong all season this year and they took so slow to act. And then you looked across, you know, up the road at our rivals, Tottenham, and the way they act decisively got rid of Pochettino, even though, you know, he's a, he's a fan's favourite. They moved, they got Mourinho in, and then we looked at our guys just differing along, almost like they didn't want to, you know, get rid of the manager when they knew that things were just going downhill. And now we're in a situation where we've got Freddie in. I thought they would have had like a replacement lined up already to come in, but they just look a bit indecisive. You know, they, are they really, you know, the, the, the owners of the club based in America, they, they've got big projects over there that they're doing like with the LA Rams where they're building a new stadium, etc. Are they more concentrated on that and not Arsenal. That is the frustration of fans. And, um, you know, they just don't seem to be on the ball with what's going on over here um, with Arsenal Football Club. It's, it's very understandable having a little bit of envy towards Tottenham Hotspur in terms of how swift they were in terms of getting rid of Pochettino and appointing Jose Mourinho. Is there envy as well in the identity of Jose Mourinho? Would you have taken him as Arsenal manager? 
I mean, you know what? Me personally, I'm, I'm not a fan of Mourinho. Um, I, I, I just think that, uh, you know, I think some of the things he said over the years about Arsene Wenger, Arsenal, very, very disrespectful. It would have seemed a real... I don't know if it would have split the fan base if he would have come in. I know there was a lot of fans when we were talking to them that were like, no way, we do not want this guy anywhere, nowhere near the club. But you have to say, if we if he had come, I'm sure a lot of Arsenal fans would have said, all right, fair enough, this is a big name, a big appointment. And where that little bit of envy's come in is that we're looking at, we're like, they've brought in a big name now. They makes them a more of a serious proposition. And we're differing around now. Bought in Freddie, not sure who we're going to get. Will this person come? Will It looks very indecisive. They literally got rid of their manager the night, and by the next morning, the new guy was in. Why didn't we do that? Why have we not been prepared? We, we saw, I, I personally thought that maybe um, the manager would have went before the international break when we lost that game against Leicester. It gave two weeks in which to bring in a new guy. If they didn't, they stuck with him. Went on another two games, you know, draw and a loss. And, you know, it's possible points missed by not bringing in a big name. You've seen Tottenham, they've had a bit of a bounce since Mourinho's come in. They've won three games on the bounce. So I just think it's been very indecisive um, by our board. Who is the, so who is the permanent uh, replacement for you, Robbie, of the realistic candidates? Well, there is Pochettino. <laughs> so he's out there, he's available. Whether we want to come or not, you know, I mean, do do a Sol Campbell. <laughs> we, we'd, uh, we'd have to wait and see. Uh, there's a lot of fans who'd love to see that. Uh, we'll wind them lot up the road, have to wind them up. But he's available. He's out there. We should be talking to him. Um, and then, of course, there's other targets. There's uh, the, um, I look at Max Allegri. He's mm. available. All right, I know he said he's taken a year out. But, you know, I remember when Klopp said he was taking a year out. Liverpool managed to tempt him there. Could ask, I mean, he would be perfect, I think. Then there's other managers that you could try and remove from a club. Brendan Rodgers, a lot of Arsenal fans have been talking about now. Um, but whether he'd leave, you know, I mean, they're second in the league now, Leicester, and they're flying. Would he want to leave to come? I mean, he hasn't completely denied it when he's been asked it, asked about it. So, listen, we need to act like a big club and, and bring one of these, uh, these names in. Um, and I think, you know, what's happened at Spurs with Mourinho going there, it's put a lot of pressure on our board now. You know, I mean, a lot of the fans are looking at it and saying, "Well, hold on, look what they did. What are you going to do?" It's interesting. Like, I, th I think the Allegri thing at face value makes a lot of sense. Probably, he's a manager who could, in theory, turn a defense, any defense really, into a, a better defense. Even though the perhaps the tools he has to work with at Arsenal wouldn't be amazing. But there's some good detail in David Ornstein's column this morning in the Athletic. He says when they tried to speak to Allegri previously, that the major stumbling block with him was communication. That sources say he did not even make small talk in English when he came in for a previous interview, and that his agent spoke more English than Allegri did Italian. Arsenal were also understood to be unimpressed with the 52-year-old's request to bring in nine members of backroom staff. He's a good manager, Robbie but a manager who works in complicated ways and perhaps not the simple fix that the club needs at the moment. Yeah, well, the nine people, is that the money thing again? You know what I mean? See, this is the thing that angers Arsenal fans, right? Like, the guy's going to want to bring in his team. I, mm. I've got no problem with that. And I think, also, I think this communication thing is a bit overdone sometimes. I mean, I know a lot of people said it about Unai Emery's communication. A lot of that was based off, you know, are they talking about his communication to the players? Always communication to the press. I've got no problem. Listen, when Pochettino first came in at Tottenham, he couldn't speak English. He spoke for the interpreter. Bielso is at Leeds at the moment. He doesn't speak any English, but on the pitch, you see them carrying out his instructions to the T. So I think Allegri is that big name and that sort of guy that will be able to deal with the big players and egos that we've got at Arsenal be able to get the defence sorted out. I know it's a bit of a stereotype, but Italian managers tend to focus first on defence. You can see from the game yesterday, our defending is dreadful at the moment. It is what is um, derailing Arsenal. We've got brilliant attacking players. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, Lacazette, Pepe, um, Martinelli. We're good going forward, but the problem is we cannot defend. So we constantly get done on the counter-attack. And somebody like an Allegri... Italian manager is going to come in, he's going to get us organised and get that defence sorted, and I think he'd be perfect. But, again, it goes back to the board. Yeah. Are you 
tough enough or you got enough um, resolve in you to go out there and get that done. If you've spoken to him once, surely you can go back and, and, and get him to come along. So, Robbie, let's assume that they won't do that with Allegri and that Pochettino probably won't take the gig for now. Who is the most likely candidate, do you think? Is, is Brendan Rodgers the last man standing when it comes to that? It's Brendan Rodgers, but they're going to have to pay a lot of money to get him as well. You know, so, and as I say, they're, they're second in the league at the moment. They're flying. If I was Brendan Rodgers up here, why would you want to leave? You know, there's Nuno Espirito Santo at Wolves, but there's a lot of Arsenal fans who seem a bit indifferent about him, not thinking is he that big name that we really like to see. Uh, Mikel Arteta, who you already mentioned, but, you know, he's a number two. We don't know if, you know, he's going to be the one. Yes, Man City play good football, but how much of that is down to Mikel Arteta, you know, as one of the fans described to me yesterday, we don't know if he just turns up at the training ground and puts the cones out or if he's the guy getting all of the uh, messages across to everyone. So, uh, I don't know. I think this is a big moment for the Arsenal yeah. board and they really got to get this appointment right. It's, it's going to be a fascinating few weeks. There's no question about that, Robbie. Just one last thing I wanted to ask you about before we wrap up this morning. I'm not sure, did you see Rory Smith's article in the New York Times last week kind of focusing on uh, your YouTube channel. A lot of interesting detail in it, and I've always been fascinated about how you guys get on with Arsenal Football Club. And I didn't realise that the name change to AFTV was perhaps a directive from Arsenal that they didn't want Arsenal Fan TV associated with the Arsenal brand. Uh, am I being too simplistic there? Uh, is that correct? <clears throat> that, that was a bit um, inaccurate. It wasn't a, a directive from, from Arsenal Football right. Club. That was us deciding to to change it ourselves, to give our own identity because, you know, um, AFTV is our own, you know, identity. In, it, instead of having, our, I mean, everybody knows we're Arsenal Fan TV and we're, you know, for the fans, but AFTV was our own choice. It wasn't a directive from, from Arsenal. So that was a bit in, in, inaccurate um, in that article. Is, is there ever often blowback from Arsenal and the officials in the club with the negativity that comes through in Arsenal? Uh, on AFTV now because, of course, your, your biggest numbers do come from uh, the hottest takes, I think it's fair to say, especially when things aren't going great at the club? No, there isn't. There isn't. We've got, um, we have a decent relationship with the club. I think the club um, recognise that fans have an um, opportunity to have their say. And I think, you know what, some of the stuff I've seen recently, um, I mean, I had a little bit of a tussle last week with uh, Talk Sport, for instance, and I heard Simon Jordan again on there yesterday having a pop at us, right? Talking about, oh, they have a go at the fans having a go at the players. They forget that when things are going well, the fans are praising these guys. And we're there at every single game. And I just look on it and I think some of these, a lot of hypocrisy going on at the moment because some of these channels, I mean, when Unai Emery went last week, they had a whole day special. Emery's gone, ring in, tell us what. And it's almost like they're saying to fans, you're not allowed to have an opinion. You're not allowed to have a say. Now, we are here for fans to have their, us, their say. We're a huge platform, and fans do get to get their opinions across. And it's not always negative, and not all of our views come from negativity. I mean, I remember when Arsene Wenger left, all of these outlets were saying to us, oh, what are you going to do now? You know, you're going to have to uh, shut down, aren't you? Now they're saying to us, oh, why are you, you know, it's not just there for negativity. Our platform is there for fans to talk about every single game. And we, we for the last um, nearly seven years we've been in, in existence, we've been at every single Arsenal game. And a lot of people making comments on Arsenal, they ain't been to any games. Yeah. They haven't been to Arsenal. So what gives them the right to know more than some of the fans that are there week in, week out? So... No, um, listen, with Arsenal, we, we, we don't get any um, blowback from them. Um, I think they're very fair to us. Um, they they recognise that it's fans having their opinions. And they see us there every week and they know that we're not just there for controversy. We are there to see our team succeed. However, if we f see things going bad, like what we, what's been happening recently under Unai Emery, fans are going to comment on it. It's how it is. It's football. The, the, the Simon Jordan comments, like obviously that was on, on TalkSport over there for anybody here who hasn't seen them. He, he said, I wonder what the average IQ is when I listen to AFTV, which I presume was a headline you weren't too happy to see. Oh, you know, I'm questioning the IQ of fans. I just thought it was really pompous 
from a guy that, you know, I would really like to know, he's a Palace fan, how many Palace games has he gone to in recent times? How many Arsenal games has he gone to? But he's there commenting on Arsenal, but somebody who, you know, has travelled all the way to Norwich yesterday, they're not allowed to say something. Fans should stand on the terraces, cheer your team, and then go home and shut your mouth and don't say nothing, you little dumb fans with no IQ. I mean, how pompous is that? This is exactly why our platform is so successful, because we're giving an ordinary fans a chance to have their say, and they don't have to listen to people like that who are just, I'm sorry, they're dinosaurs for football. Now we have given fans a chance to have their say, and it's going to continue, and long may it continue. There's other platforms very similar to ours for other clubs like Man United, Liverpool, Chelsea. And um, right now they're gaining and gaining followers and gaining people watching it because people like to see real fans having their say. It's not to say that guys like yourselves don't do a fantastic job because you do. The way you analyse football, your overall knowledge of football is great. But for someone like Simon Jordan to say the IQ of a fan is low because they came on maybe and had a pop at a player or a put... And then the thing is as well, they're very hypocritical because they will then go on to say, oh, the manager should be sacked or this player's not playing well. What gives them the right more than a fan who's emotionally attached to that team, pays his money week in, week out? It, honestly, it gets me upset, but listen, um, we have to accept that, you know, uh, uh, criticism will come our way and I'm cool with it. We can take it and we can defend it. Christoph Robbie, thanks a million for joining us this morning. That was great. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Yeah, keep up the good work, man. Thanks a million for joining us.